The access policy is where we define all the required rules controlling the organization's security policies. It unifies a rule base for several security components including application, content awareness, identity awareness, mobile access, etc. With this in mind, picture the following situation. You've set up a security policy and you've successfully deployed it. Not long afterwards, you inspect the logs to see that everything's okay. And you notice something rather intriguing. Even though you specifically prohibit communication from your organization to any Facebook service, you see the first packet of a TCP handshake with a Facebook server pass through. Why is this packet not immediately dropped? After you dig in even deeper, you understand that the rule base is in possible match. What's that all about? As we know, a connection's handshake packets do not contain any information on higher OSI layers. This means that when a connection is initiated, the gateway still does not know what service or application the connection is trying to reach. Therefore, it defines it as a possible match until further packets arrive. Once we have enough information with additional packets, the final rule base match can be achieved and the temporary rule base state of possible match ends. In this case, since connections to Facebook should be dropped, the final result is dropping this connection. Let's look at the following scenario and see how this behavior is reflected. Our policy contains three rules. The first rule prohibits the download of executable files from any internal source to the internet. The second rule prohibits access to any service or application that is classified as gambling. The third rule permits any possible type of connection. James from Finance is trying to download an executable file for an advanced calculator he found on the net. Let's look at the flow of matching within this rule base. As the handshake packet does not have enough information about higher OSI layers of networking, both Rule 1 and Rule 2 receive the state of possible match. Rule 3, which is completely permissive, will be considered a match. Further packets are allowed to flow in order to gather more information. The HTTP header arrives and the gateway turns on inspection engines to examine the content in the connection. The URL filtering engine determines that this is not a gambling site. Therefore, for rule number two, the status of the rule is no match. The content awareness engine still does not have enough information to determine if James is trying to reach an executable file. Therefore, rule number one remains a possible match. Further packets flow with the HTTP body. At this stage, the content awareness engine detects that the target content is an executable file. This means that for this rule, there is a match. Since this rule is a match and there are no matches above it in the rule base and no rules in possible match state, this rule is the final match and this connection is dropped. A different day, a different user trying to access a different service. Jeff is trying to access an FTP server to download a user guide, which his company allows, unlike Facebook. As expected, the handshake packet contains the destination port of 21, which is the known FTP port. Even though port 21 is not associated by definition with the known Facebook ports, this rule will still be impossible match. This is due to a security mechanism within the access policy which inspects all possible ports of applications and categories with a block action. So, even though Jeff is trying to reach an allowed service, his connection will still be processed in this case by the Facebook application rule. This behavior is as expected and is instated for security purposes. In our third and final nugget of this series, we will discuss a way to optimize the performance in such situations. Hint application rules should be on the lower end of your rule base so that they won't be processed first but last. Now that we understand possible match, let's throw in a twist in the plot. Rachel is trying to download an Excel spreadsheet which contains formulas that can help her in her line of work. In her company, downloading Excel files from the internet is prohibited. After initiating the connection, there's a malfunction on the website 
and the connection is terminated. In this case, the cleanup rule is in a state of match, and since we still do not have enough information on the first handshake packet to determine the deeper nature of the destination, this rule, requiring a deeper inspection, will be in a state of possible match. But what happens if rules are in a state of possible match and the connection is terminated for any reason before the final match can be reached? Because there isn't enough information to reach a final match, the connection can neither be accepted nor dropped. This also means that no log will be generated as it's only generated upon final match. Enter Finalize Log. The system always aspires to reach a final match even though it doesn't have the full picture. In most cases, the first accept rule, which is in a match state, will become the final match rule. For instance, in cases such as in this scenario, where the handshake packets are accepted and there is a cleanup accept rule in place. In such cases, a log will be generated describing the rule where we had a match and notifying us that the connection was terminated before detection. Remember, this is just a final match on the first rule to have a match. It has no implication on accepting or dropping the connection because the connection had already been aborted in the first place. This mechanism is only in place to gain closure and to write a log to the system. Note that depending on your installed product version, you may see the access rule name as follows. In summary, possible match is a temporary state of the rule base until it has all the required information to reach a final decision.